Welcome to Sacred Sessions, light-filled, uplifting and informative conversations for people on their spiritual path. Join me, Melissa Matthews. And me, Alison Filler here, each week as we openly share our personal experiences and wisdom on life, love and spirituality in the modern world. Hello and welcome to another episode of Sacred Sessions. I'm Melissa Matthews and I'm here with Alison. Alison's waving to those. Hi everyone, how are you today? (laughs) I'm sure they will, it's a psychic prediction. (laughs) (laughs) We are together here on the Central Coast today for this episode. Um, There's some building work going on next door for me, so... um, it's better for me to just drive up and we can it's just get spontaneous, into spontaneous, spontaneous trip up. That's right. That's right. So coming up in this episode, we have been guided to talk about a few things. Um, some of them are about my own experiences and what has been coming up when I've been um, doing my readings over the last week for people and also for Alison. Alison, what are you talking about? Well, you know, I, w- I always like to share the kind of things that come up with um, what happens in my sessions with my clients as well, because it's amazing how much things go in, like, it's like seasons of events sometimes, or yeah. just like topics of things that are coming up for, for, for lots of people Everybody, at the same yeah. time. So yeah. w- I guess we're hoping that what we have to share with today, what's been experiencing for us and with our clients that you may have been going through as yeah. well. That's right. And I've also had a question from um, a woman called Laurel and she's in regional New South Wales about energetic healing. So we, there was nothing specific about it. It was just the topic. So we're just going to bring through whatever we're guided to on that topic as well. So, but Alison, would you like to start or do you want me to start with what's coming up? No, you start, Melissa. You tell me what's (laughs) been, um, what is it that you feel has been going on for you and your clients lately? Okay, and she throws me into the hot seat. Thank you. <laughs> okay, one of the really big things was boundaries. And um, and I actually brought it along on my special little clipboard here. Okay, and, um, you know, one of the things that the guides wanted to bring through was, um, you know, that, that we have um, boundaries, and, and a lot of it's related to um, family structures, you know, which is gender-related responsibilities in the... Tr- traditional sense now we only know what we know so don't anyone jump on the bandwagon here or whatever but just understand that these are the things that are coming up and so as women you know we we may or may not feel that we have certain responsibilities and that we as a caretaker can be there but we also you know we want to go out and we want to work and we we really want to take up all of the opportunities that we can in the world but but it is it is hard and this is what has been coming through. Like there is a, there's a change going underway where actually we're drawing back as women and we're seeing, you know what, these are great opportunities and great options, but what is it that we really want to do for ourselves in this life? Because we do have choice now, and this is a wonderful thing. So for me, you know, um, it is actually about balancing the work. You know, I don't have children at home anymore. It's quite nice, I'll be honest <laughs> with you. <laughs> What's other, that like? <laughs> other countries, other cities, big bank account. I don't know, just that sort of thing. But you know, like when I even think back, like to five years ago and ten years ago, like I was, and say let's let's even go back to twenty years ago. I knew that I could do everything that I wanted to do, but I was still doing it all, and I was exhausted. Like when I think now, I was just I was absolutely exhausted. So. You know, it got overwhelming. So I regularly, that's why I regularly try and bring it back to me. But I did have an occasion last week where I um, had my week set out and I got a phone call or a text actually and saying, you know, um, are you available tomorrow? Can I see you tomorrow? And it doesn't really matter whether this is a friend or a client, but I had my day set and that meant that I could sleep in a little bit more. And I just said, look, um, you know come over come over at nine o'clock or or five o'clock um and but then it was all chopping and changing and gee i tell you what it really 
really annoyed me mm -hmm. and it's all love and light for me in my <laughs> home and I got really annoyed and uh, and I tell you what it was just like no because in the end she cancelled anyway and it was just like you're joking I've been once again pulled back into that and that's the whole thing about like boundaries and responsibilities and choice you know I'd set it up I don't do that anymore I don't try and fit in anything anymore that is outside of what I can cope with but I tried to do it, and you know what? It really flung me. Oh, dear. I know. And Alison's so surprised because I'm normally pretty <laughs> cutthroat with this sort of thing. It's sort of like, no, this is it. This is what I'm fitting in. But, but it really shook me, and I thought to myself, you know, I was not disappointed in myself. I was actually proud of myself that I don't do that anymore because mm -hmm. I realized how much it sucked out of me. Yeah. How's that working for you? Well, I think... Um Oh, haven't we all had those experiences where, you know, you know last th things happen at the last minute and you think, okay, I'll just squeeze that in or I'll just do that. And then it kind of just all goes pear shaped and that you end up chasing your tail or um, just not in a good place by the end of the day. And I think it's that resentment that builds up, that inner frustration and, and resentment that starts to build up. You start off, you know, wanting to just, you know, support someone or be mm. there for someone or, you know, yes, say yes, that thing. But then if it doesn't go to a particular way, I know. It can be feeling resentful. But that was, that was my life before. Like I was able to fit all of that in. And then, you know, circumstances change and I decided, you know what, that's not great for me anymore. And, and, you know, sometimes I can feel like, oh my gosh, life's going so slow, but I get things done. But that just really threw me. And, gee. Well, that's yeah. the old adrenaline junkie now. Like, no. <laughs> <laughs> so no. we get addicted to the drama, we get addicted, we, or we live like that drama filled, adrenaline filled lifestyle. And that's the better the devil we know. Like, it's. That's what came up for another um, <laughs> client, actually. It was just like, uh, you know, is this drama? necessary for me mm -hmm. and she said she liked that that was a question that she could ask herself and she liked that but i tell you what i wasn't thinking about that question <laughs> at that time i was just like what the hell is going on here i've done so well in my life i'm a winner <laughs> <laughs> so there you go so what about you What's so I guess when you, when I hear you talk about that, it makes me think about the topic that um, I've been, you know, been teaching my clients a lot lately. It's about trusting your gut again and looking at the different areas of you that you could be res um, dwelling in more than others. So when I think about, when I talk about that, there's a few energy centers, and I think this might tap into the energy healing kind of um, question, but we can either be living in our head, in our heart, in our from our gut, mm. or even from our whole physical body, we can get sensations. But trusting your gut, if we've, if we've maybe in our life trusted our gut at some stage or thought, you know, this is a good thing and things go pear-shaped, Many times we can start to turn away from our intuition or um, not trust our gut and then all the energy goes to our head and mm. then we can be worrying and overthinking all the time or always living in our head. And the danger is, is when we're always in our head, that's a lot of times where our ego and um, fear can reside a lot of the time. And so it's really important to be able to I'd love you all to just maybe journal about this or think about this. Um, is your gut and when in your life do you trust your gut? Do you use your gut instincts on things? And if so, how often do you use your gut instincts? Is your gut something that you trust or is it something that you used to trust that you don't trust anymore? Well, I forgot that I trusted it. Otherwise, I would have just said, you know what, I'm not going to go there <laughs> <laughs> because it's all about me. So I'll bring it back to me on this. But that's, yeah, that was, I, I felt something then. So I'm sure that that would resonate with many. Yeah. yeah. So mm. trust issues come up mm. a lot with my clients that I see trust, lack of trust, mm. insecurity, um, being let down really shows up in the way you act in life, the way, and even in your body. So if you've, if you, if, if you're, if you've 
been if your trust has been broken by people maybe not just one pe- one person maybe it's many people maybe trusting people is really hard and even trusting your own gut instincts again because you thought this person was a good person or maybe you thought you know you could trust this person um i know it's really wreaked havoc for me in my life mm. thinking i could trust someone and then f- realizing that they weren't trustworthy at all and it ties into some forgiveness work as well that that is often very hard to do. You're not going to ask me to forgive this, are you? Because I'm not going there. I just forgot. my. I just forgot it. You and just forgot. Yeah, I just forgot. You forgot to check in with your gut instincts. I just, on... thought, it, I just thought I'd be nice, that was all. Oh. Yeah, it can happen too. But look, I'll, I'll go with the exercise you're going to give. Because, <laughs> you know, there's, there's still room for improvement there, Alison. <laughs> but, like, that's the thing. I know what, I mean, how many... How have you, you know, have you how's, how's it affected you, Melissa, over the years when you've, like, really thought you could trust someone and oh. and it turns out that you can't? Like, is that, you know, did that make it hard for you to um, trust your gut or your uh, trust your instincts? Yeah, so I had a lot of difficulties, like, earlier on in my life with boundaries and things because I, I wasn't brought up in a household that was consistent with that. My father was not consistent. Um, but having said that, it, it took me a while to navigate my way through and to learn what trust meant. Yeah. What trust meant and that there's different levels of trust trust depending on the relationship but I also have that responsibility as well to to look at it but I do get tired and sometimes I just forget about yeah. the mechanics of trust so I myself I'm pretty good at it and I am and I understand that people are where they are yeah so um yeah I do get disappointed but how but, how do you navigate like can you still have people in your life that no I've got no you... friends now <laughs> because <laughs> i know some people are just so cut and dry that's it they're out of the clan they're like out I, like do you wipe people or do yes. you st- <laughs> or do you just have a little bit more you know um a little bit more distance and yeah. you know discernment around that part. it doesn't do. mean yeah i mean i, I like to if if you're really like betrayed me or or let me down it's like Okay, it takes a lot for me to wipe people because I am, you know, have those qualities of being a an earth angel and I hate to be mean or nasty and things like that. And it does mean that you can get taken advantage of quite often. So I've had to really work on that. But um, you know, trust what happened for me when I when I was betrayed and I could no longer like trust someone or trust a really important per- people in my life or trust me to be able to make good decisions it really it really can affect your gut yeah it gets and, me in the solar plexus there it's like oh, i can feel it and that's the thing with the energy healing side of thing this mind body connection i see t- so many clients with gut issues food intolerances food sensitivities and you know what i say to them off you know i say at the bottom of this you have um, food intolerances because you've tolerated people way too long that you really shouldn't be able to tolerate okay. and so this mind body connection really starts to play havoc with your with your gut and you disconnect from your emotion a very important emotional mm. center don't mm. you yeah well you know like it was so tricky in that in my earlier life that actually I did have I did have a lot of issues. There were so many things that I couldn't do and couldn't eat and couldn't, my body couldn't tolerate. And even now, like, I really, I'm really quite mindful, although Alison knows behind the scenes, I'll just eat anything. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> what Alison doesn't see wasn't eaten. <laughs> no, I came here last week, was it the week before, and she just said, Oh, we can go and get a pie. And I'm like, Do I look that bad? <laughs> do i look that desperate for this type of food but my point is is that i've become a lot more relaxed about like what i eat in that but i had to be very specific and it did take me a long time there's still things that i can't tolerate um with relate in relation to food and things like that as well but but i am on the whole much better and my energy is more um you know balanced and things 
but that was a huge thing and I'm still at times like I'm still do check in about my relationships partnerships um, in my personal life and my business life even through acquaintances I still check in and see how I feel about it I still check in because sometimes I am disappointed but I can take it back into what you know that lovely energetic meditation state and you know what that's how people are I'm not perfect maybe I'm doing it in some way more than likely not because look at me but it does I do get disappointed at times I do well that's the thing our what I've learned through being becoming more and more sensitive is that our body is always trying to speak to us it's yeah. always trying to get our attention this is our sixth sense this mm. is how our body and our intuition communicates with us how many times have you had like a gut feeling about something or something's not right but you kind of like oh no no it'll be fine it'll be fine what that does to your poor little gut and your emotional center it has to start speaking louder and louder to mm. you to wake up and listen and so i want the more you can really um really start to become more intuitive listen to your body listen to your gut listen to um your body's that barometer. That little niggle. That yeah. little niggle that's just something's not right. Yeah. yeah. And that's why I love kinesiology because muscle testing biofeedback can just give you instantly back that that feedback, mm. whether this is right for you or this is not right for you, what mm. this is, you know, and and what you can tolerate and what you can't tolerate. And when people are healing from food intolerances, yes, we need to restore the physical gut health because because our digestive enzymes become depleted our you know we need probiotics we need hydrochloric acid we often need you know some lighter foods in there to support our gut and things like that but the more your gut um, feels that you can trust it that you're listening to it the more it can relax as well and trusting trusting my gut again it's just been such a wonderful thing to be able to <laughs> Because there are people who will tell you one thing and then do another. You find out later on, I just, yeah, you find out later on and you just think, I just want to kill you now. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> but I've had, it, yeah. I've had questions. A lot of my clients will say, well, what do you do? Like, how do you forgive that person? Or forgiveness can be a tricky thing because sometimes my clients, say, if I give that, if I forgive that person, does that mean that then I have to still be best friends with them or like you don't condone it and things just, like that? You so just become aware of it, and that's just who they are, and they can't help it. The same as you can't help being who you are. But you, but it's the that forgiveness to me is like a way of of understanding who they are. You're not condoning it, but you're not. That's not part of what you want in your life, and, and yeah. that's it. Yeah, exactly. How, um, how does that like for you? Like I've walked away like completely from complete a complete life at one point, and I felt so much better for doing it. And I I just I still remember when I thought back even six months after I walked away completely from everything, how much better I felt and how much lighter I felt in my body, and I forgave, but. I didn't forget because I knew that I was more important or that I was worth that I had yeah. worth I wasn't more important than that person but I I felt like I had worth but it brought about a lightness in my body and it a like physically um, changed because I could sleep at night I wasn't so nervous and anxious yeah because I didn't realize like if we're talking about that um, you know uh, that trust thing you know how much it had built up so I was not really aware of of um what my body felt like yeah because it was under such tremendous pressure which i didn't think it was at the time yeah because it's a slow it's a slow boil you know yeah definitely yeah. it's amazing how many people say come come to me and they're like oh no i'm not, I'm not that stressed and it's like <laughs> <laughs> it's just you built up this high you know yeah. tolerance and level of stress um but the the thing about trust is what I had to realize and I've, you know, had to help a lot of my clients is that what happens when someone used to be trustworthy and then for certain ish reasons that they have in their life are no longer trustworthy. And for me, I've talked openly about 
having um, people in my life with um, drinking problems and alcohol problems or addiction problems. Mm. And that is, that is the thing that I had to really kind of start to understand and realize that when people aren't, are, are struggling with issues like that in their life, they really can't promise things. And I know, you know, my husband used to promise me this and promise me that. And he really meant it at the time. A lot of things he promised and he really did promise it. But that they're not physically capable of keeping that promise. And that was took me a long, long time to understand Mm -hmm. until I realized that there was a bigger issue going on Mm -hmm. here. It wasn't that he was being trying to hurt me or anything. He wasn't physically able to keep those promises of like not drinking too much anymore or not, you know, doing certain things anymore. And there's a, there's a saying in, um, AA and Al-Anon that, you know, if, if their lips are moving, if, if someone's not in a recovery program or still drinking or things like that, if their lips are moving, then you have to take what they say with a grain of salt Mm. because, and that was just, you know, helped me so much be able to separate Mm. and to give and to for me to be able to understand what I need to do and then trust my gut because as many times people say oh no I'm not going to do that again but your gut's like "Uh." (laughs) (laughs) like you know Mm. so yeah I just thought I wanted to share that because it, it is very hard for people to figure out why they you know why people can't be trustworthy yeah so um my father my father's passed away now and um it's very nice when he visits me (laughs) actually he popped in last week to help with another reading (laughs) sometimes like he'll do that um um but anyway but he wasn't a great father and it was it was because of his alcoholism Mm -hmm. and so when you're talking about you know like that that sort of thing that's why like my childhood it wasn't consistent but i learned like i also learned that that was how people would would respond in the world you know but dad was a great like he he had a lot of fine characteristics about him like he was funny he was extremely smart and you know there were so many good things about him but with that and growing up with that that trustworthy and that expectation of um you know of uh someone being truthful like I know that from when he spoke and he would speak about things and we were going to go and do things or whatever Mm. and they didn't eventuate so you know these are things that a lot of people resonate with because Mm. you know when we think back onto our childhood we we may not have it now but maybe we had it in our childhood or we understand that because that's what addiction is about you know so for me I grew up with that so I had to unlearn a lot of that behavior because you do learn that behavior you learn how to respond you learn not to ex well I did I learned not to expect anything from people and because of that they learned that they could get away with anything yeah so you know that's the thing and that's what happens is that there's not that consistency there's not those boundaries there and so and if they're not being held accountable or like held responsibility or or things like that and when you're you know when you're the adult child or when you've got a a, a parent it was you know for me i didn't grow up around that i would grew up like around you know if my parents said they were going to do something like they're generally really would but it makes you walk around on eggshells a lot of time and not having that trust Mm. you know really can do damage to your nervous system and your energy field and um and depletes the energy Mm. within a lot of your meridians that lead to your organs and so when we talk about energy healing um you know i like to talk about the chakras and yep. the meridians in our body and we have one um and these are all the energetic flows in our body mm-hmm. one for each organ in the body and if you're if you're say you're you know worrying a lot of the time or your trust is gone that's depleting all the energy or the chi flowing yep. into your gut and then yep. over time if your organs aren't getting enough electricity and energy and yeah. chi, they start to 
to break down yeah. and it's where disease sets in. So it's almost like um, the energy goes into a one-way street and it stops there and it stays there. That's what it's like um, if you maybe you don't have an understanding of it. It just stops there. It becomes stagnant. And um, so a great, um, a great way to explain this um, and how it would come out is that um, Dad, um, in my family, I'm not the only one who still um has difficulty sleeping at night mm -hmm. um so and it's and dad was just like it's just words and all that sort of stuff and you know so the you know let's be clear about this there wasn't any any anything else going on. it was just like this thing where we couldn't sleep so that i have to be really mindful about that because that did affect that the energy yeah. centers within the body but it affected cortisol as well so it upset that endocrine endocrine system yeah within my body because Definitely. of that fear but also that lack of sleep oh yeah so this is like this is a great way to actually explain like what happens so and then you know digestion and so it goes through so maybe that's for some people that are you know to kind of understand that follow-on physical effect of that but it affects that energetic well the the fear. way the way um a good way to look at it is that our human body is perfectly designed to be able to stay healthy and happy and regulate everything. Yeah. But it has a sympathetic nervous system mm -hmm. and the parasympathetic nervous mm -hmm. system, which means in order to get up and go and function, it also needs to switch off, rest and digest. Mm -hmm. And if you're if you're growing up or if you're dealing with a lot of trust issues around you, instability, it your body can't switch off and fully rest, recover and restore. And um, so when you're even sleeping at night or just trying to relax, if your mind or your nervous system is still plugged in or mm. worrying about this, worrying about that, or even <laughs> energetically, because my husband's like crazy. He used to, he's a workaholic as well and he would never switch off and relax. So. I know a lot of clients as well, and I think <laughs> Melissa as well. If you're married or if you have a partner that is very highly strung or is an overachiever or a workaholic or maybe is on the go all the time and have these things, it really affects us too, yeah. you know? And it's I had to work really hard to, you know, detach and disconnect from that. But then the fear of like them thinking that you're lazy or if you can't, we, we feel like we have to keep up this pace as well. And oh man, it's just adrenal fatigue and burnout right yeah. there. <laughs> yeah. Because you know, um, what I have learned is because that adrenaline was running all the time, so I never had any fear. Like my, it was like my, I had what my call, my, what my father called, you know, I've got front. Like I don't have any fear. I'll never show any fear. <laughs> And so because but, you, but it's going but on it's inside. That just, yeah, so I don't mm. you know, like very like very calm. Uh, but yeah. what that does at night, because at night the liver does all the processing and it helps with the hormones and it helps with so many different and the kidneys, it helps with so many different things to restore your body physically overnight. But if you're awake, if you are stressed, if you have that adrenal fatigue, etc., or if you just, you know what, you're just overtired. Mm. Um, Tired but why? Someone has passed away or you, you've got worries about a job or whatever. You know, these are the things that that um, that the that the body struggles with because that's the yeah. time that it does that. So It's like a leaky tap. Like your yeah. adrenal glands that secrete the cortisol, it's just like a yeah. leaky tap. It's just yeah. constantly just leaking yeah. out these stress <laughs> hormones. <laughs> So I dose up on a few things like, <laughs> like um, you know, particular types of magnesium and, and bees and things, vitamin Bs and things like that as well. But but that's through a pathology thing because I'm, you know, because <laughs> I'm not the most relaxed person as you know. <laughs> but that's why it's really great to to make sure to that you are talk. taking you know some supplements and oh, gee, things to help you relax. And I use a lot of essential oils to help relax. <laughs> Or other kind of vibrational things yeah. to just help calm, calm your mind, switch off. And then I've been telling my kids <laughs> lately, I've been, you know, um, 
Imagine getting into bed and that your bed is a magic charging mat. Yes. It's like you're lying on the bed with the pillow and it's like plugging in, plugging yourself into a phone. Into, yeah, it's plugging yourself into like universal source and it's just coming through and doing what it needs to do. Yeah. Yeah. So what is it? A, a magic? A magic charging, like a magic charging mat is like your bed that you lie on. So when you lie on your bed at night, you're getting into that receptive mode of allowing yourself to switch off and be recharged, recharged, recharged. recharged. But you know what? The biggest trust issues of all was learning to trust that there is, you know, source energy or there is a power greater than us or there yeah. is angels and guides. Yeah. And I've all, I've been, you know, I feel that a lot of the trust issues that I had to go through in my marriage and in my life was the, the reason why I, you know, going through that forced me to then develop a trust in, you know, source energy or the angels as well. And yeah. that trust, knowing that I can, we, we can all tap into this trust. Yeah. It just helps take the pressure off so much more well you know sometimes like i um i feel a bit what we call discombobulated <laughs> and so what i do is i you know just turn off all the phones or whatever and i go into um uh my room like my work room the re you know the reading room and um and i'm in there and i know that i'm going to be in there for maybe quite a period of time because I will, um, you know, I'll connect in with my, my guides and invite them in. But I, and then I just say, look, as you know, I'm not feeling great. And so, um, you know, I will begin to meditate and begin to focus as best I can. And I'll ask them to help me. And, you know, the thing is sometimes with that, it can take a period of time. It can yeah. take, it can take about 10 minutes for the body to calm down enough to actually start to receive. Mm. So that light or that healing energy yep. that comes through. But I stay there and I stay there longer than what I think I should. Um, because, you know, then maybe something else will come in a particular color or something to help me as well. And I d it makes such a difference. But I've learned not to, like, rush it. Mm. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it's in divine time. It's not, in divine not time. Human it's time, in divine time. time. And sometimes I've noticed that there's like a delay, you know, like a delay, and and so it might take it then two minutes for that particular energy to come through. But it will come through. But I've now learned to wait for that because you know, I, yeah, my time. That's <laughs> my time. So, <laughs> but you know, um, so what are you thinking then about like um, with Laurel asking about um energy healing. You know, mm -hmm. so we've spoken a little bit about like the effects of, um, you know, our external environments, etc., on our physical body and also our mental and emotional health. But you know, what what are the, what are your thoughts on the energy, like expanding on that? Okay, well, when I when I think about energy healing, to me, energy is everything. Mm -hmm. Like energy, vibration, frequency is everything, and the more you can start to understand that we are all energy, energetic beings, everything, everything in this world has an energetic vibration and a frequency. And um, it just flows into everything, who you surround yourself with, the house, your house you live in, the, you know, the people around mm. you, how energetically clear is the energy and vibration in the office that you work in and the house that you work in all impacts you mm. and just being more mindful and aware of this what's the energy like in you yeah. that's why i like to i um my guys say to me all the time alison if you were a tree what would you look like and instantly i'm shown either a dead looking tree <laughs> <laughs> or like half toppled over tree or depending on what my tree is looking like is often a reflection of, you know, it's, it is in a reflection of the energy in me. Is it blocked anywhere? Is all the energy in my head? Is it like, you know, those yeah. kind of things it's to look in things in terms of energy and, and vibration and, and, um, whatever, this is the, this is the other thing 
everything in your life is a direct mirror and reflection of energetically what you're comfortable with Mm. or your belief systems are. Mm. So just by literally changing your energy, your vibration, and is what then flows and changes everything around you as well. Mm. So does that answer your question at all? Well, yeah, (laughs) because I I think that... um, um, like for me, you know, the energy healing, like what I do, I, I remember this, uh, someone came last week and there was nothing for me to do. All I needed to do was I provided like the space and her, um, her, her angels and guides were doing the energetic work because they know, they know what to do. So I didn't have to, you know, do anything other than bring through the words and describe what was going on. And I actually find that really relaxing because, again, we've spoken about that energy coming through in that frequency and everything is energy. Everything is frequency. No matter what it is, it it just is. So it can be changed and it can, you can bring your energy up. And Alison spoke about, um, what's that scale thing? The emotional, the emotional emotional scale. Emotional freedom. Frequency scale. Yeah, about love being up here, which is, you know, that universal source, God frequency. And Fear anger, or anger, anger, fear being low, and you just feel like you know, maudlin or morose or yeah. whatever. But if you know, you can change your energy very quickly by getting up and doing something, by drinking water, by going outside, by just removing yourself from a situation, coming back in, and and if the house just feels a bit low, you know, open up the windows, get some air through, and give it a little bit of a tidy up. You've like had that. arguments in yeah. your house, and so it's about, anything going yeah. on, people worrying, yeah. or a lot of yeah. negativity. So with energy healing, you're doing the same, like the same thing is occurring. So it's um, the frequency and the vibration is is rising with within the body, and it just um, it moves um, anything that is old and maybe attached. So like emotion, you know, we can get emotion in our shoulders, like the weight of the world, and so that just can help to move it out. Yeah. So there can be physical things, but essentially you can actually feel um, lighter with energy healing or even just asking for that energy to come through and to refresh you you know and we can all do that whether we're healers or or what we you know we might just think that we're an everyday person but we all have that right to ask for it and we all should ask for it so and it's important to um even balance like with with raising your energy raising your vibration clearing the blocks within your energy bodies it's about bringing balance like you know with kinesiology we often call it a balance because what's got out of balance what energy pathways are blocked what are you still holding on to what's got way out of balance like Mm. maybe you're worrying overthinking or you become more like irritable or anxious lately what's out of balance Mm. and um so i love the way that there are so many different ways to do energy healing Mm. and to bring in more energy in so many different ways. Like you said, by eating high vibrational foods, going outside in fresh air, um, holding acupressure points, um, just so many things. And they're so simple, but powerful because I know for myself, before I do anything in life, if my energy and vibration is not high, then I try not i don't do anything major first of all she just doesn't (laughs) she doesn't (laughs) but that's the thing like it's it's so important to make sure that your energy and vibration Mm. is in a, a good place first and it's like like i said before like i've been saying to my kids lately because they're they're feeling really tired and it's because they're not fully recharging at night your battery you're probably if you were to check in with yourself now and think what level does my battery Mm. when i wake up in the morning Mm. you'd be surprised many of my clients and i've asked them it's like they they're like wow it's probably just only still 20 percent so imagine Mm. like getting up every day and your energy you're starting your day from only 20 percent and then having to do all the things that you have to do you kind of like but there's no joy in that. <laughs> so if you can do things in the morning to just make sure that you're feeling your energy battery is, is balanced. 
it's yeah or it's topped balanced. up to topped like let's up. get up to 70 yes. percent, 75 percent, even 80 percent like yeah. you know like yeah. why don't why don't we challenge ourselves with that kind of thing Do over yourself. the next week <laughs> just challenge uh, maybe if anyone wants to take on this challenge of checking in with yourself over the next week and seeing where your energy yeah. is at and what kind of things even tuning into your inner guidance system mm-hmm. tuning into you and asking your your inner voice okay what one thing could i be doing or not doing yeah. that will increase my mm-hmm. energy or frequency that's and feel right. lighter that's right and another point that just came up if you're being um that if you've got to make a decision sometimes it's best not to make any decision at all you don't have to change you don't have to do anything you can just not and that is a huge amount of stress when you when you're trying to change your energy as well yeah when you've got this thing over looming you and you've got to make a choice about something you know what you don't have to you just don't so just hand it over to my guys like, hand it over it's okay a- if i need to do this let it happen if i don't, don't. Let yeah. it be okay too. But if you need to get off the road, then get <laughs> off the road. Okay. So <laughs> now, Alison, um, I'm I'm going to do a shuffle of my my cards, and I think you're going to do one too, aren't you? We're gonna so we're going to cards today. Yeah. So we're going to just do. Um, we thought you know we'd spice it up a little bit, and maybe do like just a little bit of a uh, like a just quick reading or just something to reflect on. And um, okay, so these are the Rebecca Campbell cards. They are really lovely. And um, I don't know what Alison's going to pick up, but last week, you know, when I was here and I picked up one of her cards, it was like, no. And I was like, okay. And then so I shuffled again and I picked up the same card. No, it's clearly don't use her deck. So hands off. And, and we don't go for that sort of thing, but you know, I brought my own this time. So, okay, the card that is actually come out is. It's called Trust the Niggle. What is the niggling feeling trying to tell you? This ties in with that gut thing and sitting quietly. And if if you're a person like me that needs to write something out so that you can actually work through it, then do that. And it could be, you know, what is it? Where does it feel not right within my body, within myself? What is really waking me up at night? What is just, you know, in those quiet moments, what's there? What is that? comment what is something and explore it like really super duper explore it and the other one it says don't dim to fit in this is a big thing don't you dare dim to fit in what that means is that you stand up and you know your worth and you have that confidence within you not to overpower anybody else but to understand that we are all equal and we are all worthy and we are all loved and um, you know sometimes that can take a little bit of you know uh, getting used to to understand your fabulousness but there is always something unique about ourselves and that is you know what the guidance is in the final card <laughs> it was again don't dim to fit in <laughs> they're really clear on that Here, I'll imagine, one. imagine what that's doing to your energy yep. your energy if you're dimming yourself dimming all yourself. the time and that one so i just pulled another one which is the crumbling what are you clinging on to because sometimes that can be what you're clinging on to i quite like rebecca candle's cards because they're very beautiful in a gentle type of way but it's almost so in that you can actually see the image you know it's like you know doesn't look that great in the foreground but you know there's a the light through there the light at the, you know the other side and sometimes it can be just something that we're clinging on to like you know a friendship or um, a thought or a belief system and you know what you just it's crumbling it's no it's longer just, serving you for your high yeah, school and, and it's and okay just let it go yeah it's okay so thank you for that and um, I'll, I'll hand it over to you then oh well I'll pull a card too I love this universal love deck because mm-hmm. it's got a tree on it it's a big heart. <laughs> by Tony Carmine Salerno all right so if I was to ask what would be the for our highest good today that we could bring through and this card is that I pulled is sacred union and so even though it doesn't say any more about that on the card, as I 
is all about trusting what is coming through. And the Sacred Union card, as I tune into this card, it basically has two trees side by side merging together. And it really ties in nicely as well with trust issues as well, I think, as we trust. Sacred Union is all about reconnecting to the trust within you and the more that you trust your own self, your own gut and that um, trust the light within you to be able to lead you in the right direction, that you can then attract many other people that you can then trust and lean on to. So that's, that's what I really feeling is a strong message for that card. And what I tell my clients a lot too, the more you love yourself, value yourself, believe in yourself, trust yourself and follow what lights you up, the more that you can attract other people who are capable of doing that more for you as well. And anyone from the past that has let you down or is not, is not trustworthy, Forgive them, bless them, release them, and then let and ask your angels and guides and higher self to bring in more people that love you and that you can trust and form beautiful unions with. Because I know it can be very lonely, very lonely <laughs> sometimes when you're on yeah. that in that spiritual path of awakening where you um, sometimes lose friendships or friendships fall apart, relationships fall apart. But remembering the most sacred union is the union that you have with yourself. And that is one that you're, that I'm the guides really want you to work on mm. this week is that sacred union with yourself being your own best friend and then asking the guides to bring you more and more sacred unions. So... I'm just going to pull one card because I think that was quite perfect. Oh, that is and, perfect. Um, and yeah. <laughs> well, there you are. Well, thank you for staying with us. And, um, you know, again, just as Laurel did, please, if there's something that you want us to speak about, a topic, doesn't matter what it is. And if there's a context, then, you know, then we are very, very happy to consider it and speak about it. And, um, yeah, anything else to say? No, I no. think that has all been done and um, have a beautiful week and, I, and we'll see you all again really soon. See you. Okay. Bye now. Bye. 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 Thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of Sacred Sessions. Your comments, questions and topic suggestions are welcome. So connect with us on Facebook and Instagram and through our websites. Naturally, all links are in the show notes.